We are living in a time of amazing space discoveries and extraordinary natural phenomena. Fortunately, we are now in a position where technology allows us to uncover never-before-recorded data, observe previously unavailable events, and give us a better understanding of the world around us and beyond. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three unbelievable discoveries. Parker discovers natural radio emission in Venus's atmosphere. On the first ever mission to connect with the Sun, a spacecraft approximately the size of a small car detected natural radio emissions near Venus as it flew through the planet's upper atmosphere. NASA's Parker space probe took a short adventure by Venus and was able to send back data that confirms confusing changes during a solar cycle. This information could provide clues to figuring out why Venus and Earth have so many differences. Venus and Earth were formed in comparable circumstances. They are approximately the same size, both are rocky, and their structures are alike. However, extreme differences developed shortly after the birth of these planets. Venus does not have a magnetic field, and its surface temperature is so hot that it is capable of melting lead. Venus is so inhospitable that other spacecraft have only lasted a couple of hours there. The Parker Solar Probe had its third flyby pass Venus on July 11, 2020. The goal of each flyby is to allow the spacecraft to get closer and closer to the Sun. This was the closest flyby of Venus to date. The Parker Solar Probe managed to be 517 miles above the surface. Venus expert Glyn Collinson of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, was so excited to have new data from Venus. Even though the Parker Solar Probe was closest to Venus for only seven minutes, a natural low-frequency radio signal was picked up. At first, the thin, frowned shape of the data was a mystery, but Collinson felt it was somehow familiar. Then he remembered he had seen it before. During a previous work assignment with NASA's Galileo Orbiter for an exploration of Jupiter and its moons, a similar frown appeared whenever Galileo passed through the ionospheres of Jupiter's moons. Researchers were able to use the radio emissions that the Parker Solar Probe picked up to calculate the density of the ionosphere that it flew through. The last time direct measurements of Venus's ionosphere were acquired was in 1992, with information from the Pioneer Venus Orbiter. Those measurements were taken during a solar maximum, which is the peak of the solar cycle. The latest measurements are during a solar minimum and have confirmed that Venus's ionosphere is thinner than during the solar maximum. These latest discoveries will help scientists figure out how Venus and Earth could have diverged down two such different paths after once being so similar. Tonga volcano eruption triggered atmospheric gravity waves reaching the edge of space. About 65 kilometers north of Tonga Tapu, the main island of Tonga, there is a submarine volcano named Hunga Tonga Hunga Hape. On January 15, 2022, the volcano erupted and created quite the spectacle. An international team of researchers from multiple institutions collaborated their abundant satellite data with ground-level observations to prove that Hunga Tonga Hunga Harpe's latest eruption was unique both because of its magnitude and speed, as well as the range of gravity and atmospheric waves it created. Previous to the January 15th eruption, there was a series of smaller volcanic events that began in December of 2021. January's eruption created a vertical plume that reached over 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. For 12 hours after this volcanic event, heat that was released from the water and hot ash was the most substantial gravity wave source on Earth. Satellite images show ripple-like gravity waves that extended across the Pacific Basin. Reverberating atmospheric waves that traveled around the planet a minimum of six times and reached extortionary speeds of 320 meters per second were also a consequence of Hunga Tonga Hunga Harpe's eruption. It's believed that such a large explosion was caused when large amounts of magma and water interacted. There is an extraordinary temperature difference between the water, which was around 20 degrees Celsius, and the magma, which is around 1100 degrees Celsius. 
With each contact, water would have been pushed deeper into the margins of magma, creating a larger surface area of contact and propelling more explosions in a chain reaction. Those who witnessed the eruption of Hunga Tonga Hunga Harpe reported crackling and noises like artillery fire from up to 90 miles away. Some researchers are warning that we may not have seen all of the repercussions of this phenomenal eruption yet. There is speculation that the Antarctic hole in the ozone will be negatively affected by the powerful atmospheric waves. This event affected such a large region that it will have an impact on how scientists view future atmospheric weather and climate models. James Webb Space Telescope to see Starbirth in High Definition NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has been in the headlines frequently. It's the latest deep space observatory and expectations are high for the data it's going to send back to headquarters on Earth. Soon, the James Webb Space Telescope will be focusing on a somewhat close-by region full of young stars. The trapezium cluster located 1,350 light-years away from Earth is a star nursery in the Orion Nebula. The cluster is loaded with gas and dust and has approximately 1,000 young stars crammed into an area that is just four light-years across. Stars in general are relatively young. What we mean is that they are around a million years old. It might seem funny to call something that is a million years old young, but this rings true when we compare the age of these stars with the Sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. Trapezium stars are still infants and are only about three or four days old. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers will study the trapezium cluster to gather information on stars and their planetary systems in their very earliest stages. The team of scientists, led by Mark McCorian, are zeroing in their focus on three phenomena existing in the trapezium cluster. The first is studying young space objects. This includes brown dwarfs and free-floating planets that do not orbit a star. The hope is to shed some light on how planets form and whether it is as part of star formation or on their own. The second inquiry will look into the early phases of planet formation. The study will use infrared detectors that the James Webb Space Telescope is equipped with. The infrared detectors will measure exoplanets that are possibly forming in young stellar disks. The third investigation will look at jets and outflows from young stars. Deal Ryan Nebula is home to an extraordinary amount of young stars, and because of this, there are quite a few jets and outflows of various sizes in the region. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.